Today I've got a pretty interesting video for you guys. This is featuring the Intel SSD 510 series SSD. Anyway, I ran some PCMark Vantage benchmarks on these particular SSDs. I actually ran them with a, an Intel P67 motherboard. So I've got a few different configurations to show you. First of all, I ran single drive on the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second controller as well as on the SATA 2 3 gigabit per second controller and the objective of that was to demonstrate how much of a performance advantage you get by pairing this SSD up with a proper SATA 3 6 gigabit per second controller versus running it on an older legacy SATA 2 controller. I also ran the two drives together in RAID 0 again in both configurations so on both different speed controllers to see what kind of a performance benefit we get from jumping from one one SSD to two SSDs. Uh, just as a point of comparison, I compare the onboard RAID against an LSI 9268i RAID card, uh, which I believe is configured optimally, but I'm not actually an expert at configuring the RAID BIOS, so I'm sure as the community plays around with these more, they will find ways to eke more performance out of it. And also for context, I've compared these two SSDs against an OCZ Revo Drive X2 240 gig. So that's going to show us what four SandForce drives, so that is four 60 gig SandForce drives essentially, in RAID 0 will be able to do against these. Alright, so you can come in close here and have a look. But basically, I'll exp we'll, go, uh, we'll go from by column. So the first column here is our single drive performance. And you can see that we actually gain 30% performance going from a SATA to 3 gigabit per second connection to a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second connection. Now when we actually go down to the hard drive suite results, we can see which applications are really making use of this extra bandwidth. So there's certain things that actually don't get nearly as much benefit as others. So when you're talking small files, okay, so such as adding music to a Windows Media Player, you're not going to see as huge a performance benefit as when you look at much bigger files, like say for example, video editing using Windows Movie Maker. So basically the larger the files are and the more sequentially we're reading from them or writing to them, the more benefit we're going to get from that wider interface. So as we move over here, I'm just going to bring these back up to show you guys the total scores. As we move over, we find our RAID 0 results. So you can see that on the SATA 2 connection, we actually get more benefit from RAID 0 versus on the SATA 3 connection. And I guess the reason for that would be that what we're doing when we add RAID 0 is we are doubling the amount of bandwidth available, although we're doubling the number of drives. So certain things are going to be less bottlenecked and certain things are going to be equally bottlenecked. So let's have a look at where the SATA 3 6 gigabit per second interface is really able to pull away from the slower interface. And there aren't as many huge examples of that, but you look at video editing again. So that's where you're looking at a huge performance benefit from the wider interface. Okay, Vista Startup once again gets a lot of benefit. Actually, I'm going to scroll down over here and let's see how much Vista Startup... Yeah, so that one actually didn't improve much from the single drive configuration. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so let's move over. Let's have a look at our RAID card results. So here we can see that it actually doesn't score as high as the onboard RAID, okay? But some of the results here are actually better. So you can see here Windows Defender actually performed significantly better than the onboard RAID. We're talking on the order of about 15% better. So the reason for that, I would speculate, based on the Crystal Disk Mark results that we saw before, is that the onboard, or the onboard RAID controller doesn't perform as well as the dedicated RAID controller in random reads and writes. Gaming, once again, the dedicated RAID controller absolutely blows away the onboard. In fact, many of these results are significantly better than the onboard RAID. The only reason that we're seeing this low overall score seems to be that Windows Media Center doesn't perform nearly as well on the dedicated RAID card. So that's something to bear in mind when you're looking at the overall results where you see the onboard RAID just destroying, well, you know, a hundreds of dollars dedicated RAID controller. So let's move on down here to the Revo Drive X2. Once again, we see a very low overall score, but as we move down and 
try it here. You know what? I'm going to move this one next to it or above it so that we can have an easier point of comparison. So this is the Revo Drive X2. This is two 510s on the onboard RAID controller because that's sort of the configuration I'd consider most likely. We see that the... Oh, okay, that won't fly. Okay. We see that the Revo Drive X2 actually does outperform the Dual 510s in some applications, but there are others where it just gets demolished, such as the video editing uh, benchmark, where, yeah, there's absolutely no comparison. But you look at some things like application loading, as well as the antivirus test, and it actually outperforms it. So that probably again also reflects the better performance that the Revo Drive X2 has in random uh, heavy usage scenarios versus the dual drive config. So thank you for checking out my PC Mark comparison uh, of the Intel SSD 510 against itself on a SATA 2 versus a SATA 3 interface as well as a couple other points of reference for us. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.